seeing more extremes, be it hotter, colder, wetter, drier, or windier. And it's happening in the now, not in the future. We all know what's wrong. We all know what we have to do. And why is it that we are not doing it? We are running out of time for addressing the climate emergency. Well, what's 2030 going to be? What's 2040? What's 20... I mean, if we're seeing this now, we're going to be wiped out, aren't we? I think the possibility of reaching net zero in the UK by 2050 is, is absolutely there. We need to decarbonise our economy. It's not going to be easy, but the technology is there. For something as big as climate change, all parties need to get together and they need to come up with a plan that is stuck with over decades. Reducing carbon emissions is significant for the future of all of our generations ultimately. I like that phrase, you know, climate change is system change. Change is very important. warming and climate change are sadly already with us. Last year, 2023, was the hottest year ever recorded and this year, 2024, is scheduled to be even hotter. Countries right across this beautiful planet are suffering the repercussions of climate change already and this is what brings net zero into such sharp focus. So what is net zero? Well, net zero means achieving a balance between the carbon emitted into the atmosphere and the carbon removed from it. So essentially net zero, if we're going to achieve it, means that the carbon we emit into the atmosphere is no more than the carbon we take from it. And the UK has a legal obligation to reach net zero emissions by 2050, which was enshrined into law by the Theresa May government. And how are we going to get there? Well, firstly, how we produce energy is going to be absolutely vital. Reducing dependency on fossil fuels for energy and increasing the use of renewable energy technologies such as onshore and offshore wind power are both going to be critical in the UK's trajectory towards net zero by 2050. A key step in doing this is reducing emissions by 68% by 2030 compared with 1990 levels. And back in October 2021, the then UK government under Boris Johnson pledged that all of the UK's electricity would come from clean energy sources by 2035 through the expansion of wind, solar and nuclear power. Energy is the central aspect of net zero. When we talk net zero, we want to reduce carbon emissions. And if we want to reduce carbon emissions, we need to stop polluting. And the main um, ways of polluting is from the use of fossil fuels and methane from agriculture. So a key aspect of energy when it comes to net zero is going to be energy storage, because we all know we need to radically reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. But when it comes to renewables, the wind isn't always going to be blowing and the sun isn't always going to be shining. So how are we going to do this? The University of Sheffield's Innovation District is a hub of facilities investigating and working on the future of energy and manufacturing as the UK works towards net zero by 2050. Within this, the Laboratory for Verification and Validation is an environmental and vibration facility which enables the testing of structures in ambient laboratory conditions. Temperature can be altered and this is going to be key for research in a warming climate. Dr. James Wilson is a research associate at the university, currently investigating the decarbonisation of domestic heat. Energy storage is going to be absolutely critical. Um, currently, or historically, we've had an energy supply that is relatively easily controllable. You can turn gas turbines off and on very quickly. However, we not only can't turn uh, wind turbines off and on super easily, we literally can't control the wind and the sun. So what we're going to need to do is provide um, storage at various levels to flatten these curves such that uh, when we've got surplus generation, we can squirrel that away in storage units and then we can access that stored energy uh, when we are in a deficit. Energy efficiency is going to be absolutely fundamental as the UK works towards this net zero future. And in the country, energy efficiency is rated from A to G. But how do we go about improving energy efficiency? Community Home Solutions are a company based in Nottingham that use public and private sector funding to implement domestic retrofit solutions into communities across the UK to improve the energy efficiency of homes. They receive funding from public and private sector organisations to help provide free upgrades to eligible people's homes. They have transformed many homes from the poor G energy efficiency rating to the A rating. 
and they do this by improving the insulation of homes, installing solar panels and air source heat pumps, among other sustainable solutions. They are working hard to alleviate fuel poverty in the country, and transforming insulation of homes is a fundamental first step. Insulation is critical um, because as we move to, you know, um, uh, a decarbonised heating system, ultimately, if we haven't insulated that property, it's not going to work. The aim of the funding is to alleviate fuel poverty, but also bring up the EPC rating, so the Energy Performance Certificate rating. Achieving net zero is going to require a huge collaboration from a wide range of players, whether that's government, to industry, agriculture, business and people. And when it comes to the people, people like you and me, what are the day-to-day -day changes we can make to our homes and lifestyles in pursuit of greater sustainability? Beyond how we produce energy, reaching net zero will also require significant changes to our current lifestyles, from what we eat, where we live, to how we travel. Duncan Friend is a volunteer at Sheffield Friends of the Earth and a passionate environmental campaigner. I met him back in 2021 at the Sheffield Climate Justice March when he had been on a 10-year mission to reduce his carbon footprint to under two tonnes. I wanted to go back and see him to speak a bit more at length about the specific changes he has made to both his home and his lifestyle over the past years to become much less carbon intensive. The first one was the insulation, the second one um, was basically to get the solar panels, then I got the air source heat pump, but then I got an electric car as well and that's obviously powered by um, power from the sun at times which is uh, a fantastic thing. Um, I've also decided not to fly and the last time I flew was in 2015 and I think the biggest thing in the last year has been changing my diet so um, I've slowly actually gone over to a completely plant-based diet now. It's clear that politics is going to play a massive role right at the heart of the net zero agenda but the big question is whether our current democratic political system and model is ultimately too short-sighted to tackle an issue as big important and long-term as climate change. Governments across the world are being urged to act on the climate crisis. Back in December, I followed the Sheffield Climate Justice March taking place at the same time as the COP28 summit in Dubai. Many people accuse the government of not doing enough, and the High Court recently ruled that the UK government indeed is not doing enough to meet its targets for cutting greenhouse gas emissions, meaning a new plan will have to be redrafted. The next general election is on the horizon, but can any government successfully grapple with this long-term challenge given the four to five year election cycle? I just think the whole five year political cycle is ridiculous because you get elected and all you do is try to get re-elected in five years and you don't really care what's going on long term because it's so short term. We're too short termist. That's what I mean. Our whole mindset is balance the books now. We've only got five years to get it right. and. We just can't seem to move out of that. We have an economic model, or we have a societal model that places economy right in the centre and the growth of that economy. So if we change now, I think we could, we could create a better life for the people that we're compelling to change. To some people, net zero is just a political date, but ultimately it's about transforming our society into becoming a significantly less carbon intensive one. And as I've seen, there is hope so many of the technologies and practices we need already exist and are laid out right in front of us, but it comes down to willpower and politics has to drive that. We have 26 years to try and hit this legal obligation and protect this beautiful planet we call home.